7 Common Medications That Can Be Harmful For Your Kidneys In today's medical landscape, medications play a crucial role in managing various health conditions. However, it is essential to recognize that while these drugs offer significant benefits, they also carry potential risks, particularly to the kidneys. As we age, our renal function naturally declines, making it increasingly important to minimize exposure to harmful substances, including certain medications. The aging process often brings with it a myriad of health challenges, necessitating the use of multiple medications. Some of these drugs can be nephrotoxic, meaning they have the potential to cause kidney damage. This nephrotoxicity can impair the kidneys' ability to filter blood effectively, leading to the accumulation of harmful waste products in the body and potentially serious health consequences. Kidney damage is categorized into stages, from mild impairment to complete renal failure. The likelihood of drug-induced nephrotoxicity rises with age and pre-existing kidney conditions. There are two primary types of medication-induced kidney damage, dose-dependent toxicity and idiosyncratic toxicity. Dose-dependent toxicity occurs when higher doses of a medication lead to increased kidney damage. In contrast, idiosyncratic toxicity is unpredictable and can vary significantly among individuals. In some cases, it may be prudent to avoid certain medications entirely to prevent kidney damage. Nephrotoxicity can result from conditions such as rhabdomyolysis, muscle tissue breakdown, renal infarction, kidney tissue death, and renal tubular acidosis, acid buildup, the consequences of nephrotoxicity include diminished kidney function and other complications like nephrotic syndrome and electrolyte imbalances. In this video, we will examine the effects of common medications on kidney health and offer practical advice on how to manage these drugs safely. Understanding the risks associated with these medications can empower you to make informed decisions about your health care. Stay tuned to learn how to protect your kidneys while effectively treating other medical conditions. Number one will shock you, and it might be a medication you never expected to be harmful. By watching till the end, you'll gain vital insights that could prevent serious health issues and improve your overall well-being. Don't miss out on this crucial information. Your kidney health depends on it. Now. Let us return to discussing the medications that may pose a threat to your kidney health. 7. Antibiotics and kidney health antibiotics are commonly prescribed medications that play a crucial role in treating bacterial infections. However, they are not without risks, particularly to your kidneys. Let's take a closer look at what antibiotics are and how they can affect your renal health. Understanding antibiotics antibiotics also known as antibacterials or antimicrobials, are designed to combat bacterial infections by either killing bacteria or preventing their reproduction. Common antibiotics include ciprofloxacin, cipro, amoxicillin clavulinate, augmentin, metronidazole, flagyl, trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole, bactrim, and amoxicillin. These medications are often prescribed for conditions like strep throat, pneumonia, urinary tract infections, UTIs, and skin infections. However, it is important to note that antibiotics are ineffective against viral infections such as colds, flu, bronchitis, most coughs, and many sore throats. Potential risks to kidney health while antibiotics are essential for treating bacterial infections, they can pose risks to your kidneys, especially if misused. Your kidneys are vital for filtering waste products and medications from your blood. Certain antibiotics, such as polymyxins, aminoglycosides, and vancomycin, are known to be nephrotoxic, meaning they can cause kidney damage. For instance, polymyxins may damage kidney cell membranes, leading to kidney injury. Aminoglycosides can accumulate in kidney cells, causing cell death and damage to kidney tubules. 
The exact mechanisms by which antibiotics cause kidney injury are not fully understood, but may involve oxidative stress, inflammation, and direct toxicity to kidney cells. Risk factors for nephrotoxicity Some individuals are at higher risk for antibiotic-induced kidney damage, including those with pre-existing kidney disease, older adults, individuals with dehydration, and those taking other nephrotoxic medications. Understanding these risk factors can help in preventing potential harm. Monitoring and prevention To ensure the safe use of antibiotics, it is crucial to monitor kidney function during treatment. Regular blood tests, such as serum creatinine and blood urea nitrogen, BUN, as well as urine tests, can help detect any early signs of kidney damage. Staying hydrated and avoiding unnecessary medications that may affect the kidneys are also important preventive measures. Alternatives and antibiotic resistance whenever possible. Consider alternative treatments for infections that do not require antibiotics. Overprescription and misuse of antibiotics contribute to the growing problem of antibiotic resistance, making it harder to treat infections in the future. Effective communication with your doctor before accepting an antibiotic prescription. Ask your doctor if it is truly necessary for your condition. Understanding the benefits and risks associated with antibiotic use empowers you to make informed decisions about your health. If antibiotics are prescribed, follow the dosage instructions carefully and never share your medication with others or save it for future use. 6. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs NSAIDs Many people may not immediately recognize the term non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, or NSAIDs, but names like ibuprofen, aspirin, motrin, ketorolac, celecoxib, and naproxen are quite familiar. NSAIDs are among the most commonly used medications, often available without a prescription. In fact, more than 30 million people take NSAIDs daily to alleviate conditions such as headaches, sprains and strains, colds and flu symptoms, and arthritis pain. These drugs primarily work by inhibiting an enzyme called cyclooxygenase, COX. This enzyme is essential in the production of substances that cause pain and inflammation. However, COX also plays a crucial role in protecting the kidneys during stress and regulating sodium and water excretion. When NSAIDs block COX, they inadvertently pose a risk to kidney health. All NSAIDs have the potential to cause acute kidney injury, Aki, particularly in older adults and when taken in high doses or for extended periods. This kidney injury can manifest in two main ways through changes in blood flow and inflammation, both resulting from Cox inhibition. Mechanism of kidney injury, blood flow changes. By blocking Cox, NSAIDs can narrow the blood vessels in the kidneys, reducing blood flow. This reduction can lead to fluid retention, high blood pressure, and temporary kidney impairment. If unaddressed, it might progress to more severe conditions like acute tubular necrosis, where the kidney tubules die due to lack of oxygen, potentially leading to acute kidney failure. While this may initially appear as acute kidney failure, it can eventually progress to chronic kidney disease if not managed properly. Inflammation Despite being anti-inflammatory drugs, prolonged NSAID use can trigger inflammation in the kidney tubules, the tiny structures responsible for filtering waste. Although rare, this inflammation is a serious concern, affecting a significant portion of NSAID users. Kidney issues related to NSAIDs are not uncommon, impacting 1% to 5% of daily users globally. This translates to approximately 500,000 to 2,500,000 individuals experiencing kidney injury from NSAIDs each year. These drugs are frequently implicated in hospital admissions due to adverse drug events, some of which can be fatal. Clinical Evidence and Studies A 2006 study published in the Journal of the American Society of Nephrology 
examined data from over 10,184 individuals prescribed NSAIDs for various conditions. The study found that NSAID use increased the risk of acute kidney injury by 26%, particularly within the first 30 days of use. This finding underscores the necessity for caution when prescribing and using these medications. In another study, researchers analyzed 99 patients with chronic musculoskeletal pain who took NSAIDs for 12 months. They discovered that most patients experienced a decline in kidney function while using NSAIDs, but their kidney function returned to normal after switching to alternative pain relief medications. 5. Aeretics diuretics are commonly prescribed to manage conditions such as fluid retention or swelling, frequently observed in heart failure, kidney failure, and liver cirrhosis. While some diuretics are available over the counter, prescription diuretics tend to be more potent. Common diuretics include hydrochlorothiazide, HCTZ, bumetanide, Bumex, furosemide, Lasix, spironolactone, aldotoni, and acetazolamide, diamox. These medications work by increasing urine output, helping to eliminate excess salt and water from the body. Diuretics are also effective in managing hypertension, high blood pressure, a major risk factor for kidney disease. By reducing fluid volume and blood pressure, diuretics generally support kidney health. However, they do come with potential risks, particularly concerning kidney function. Unlike NSAIDs, diuretics do not directly damage the kidneys or impair their filtering ability. Instead, they affect the latter stages of the kidney's urine formation process, altering the concentration and composition of urine. Potential risks and mechanisms. The primary concern with diuretics is their potential to cause dehydration a significant risk factor for kidney damage. By increasing urine output and changing electrolyte levels, excessive use or high doses of diuretics can lead to a state of dehydration. This can subsequently strain the kidneys and potentially cause acute kidney injury. Augie. A study examining 131 patients using diuretics who experienced acute kidney injury from 1999 to 2010 revealed important findings. Initially, 96.2% of these patients had at least one pre-existing health condition before starting diuretics, with chronic kidney disease CKD, being the most prevalent at 55.0%. The study found that patients using diuretics had higher rates of kidney disease and associated risk factors, such as hypertension and diabetes. Notably, the risk increased with higher doses of diuretics. Approximately 27.5% of the Aki cases were attributed to diuretics alone, while others resulted from a combination of diuretics and other medications. Therefore, it is crucial to consult with your doctor before starting any new medications, especially diuretics. 4. Proton Pump Inhibitors Proton Pump Inhibitors PPIs are widely used medications available over-the-counter to effectively treat conditions like gastroesophageal reflux disease, GERD, or acid reflux by reducing stomach acid production. PPIs target an enzyme in the stomach called hydrogen potassium APAs, or proton pump, which is crucial for acid secretion. While PPIs are generally safe and effective at soothing acid-related discomfort, such as heartburn, they do carry risks, particularly for kidney health. For instance, PPIs have been associated with acute interstitial nephritis AIN, a kidney disorder characterized by inflammation in the spaces between the kidney tubules. Although only a small number of PPI users develop AIN, these drugs have become a common cause of drug-induced AIN in developed countries. More concerning is that AIN caused by PPIs often shows no apparent signs and can go unnoticed, potentially leading to decreased kidney function and acute kidney injury. Aki. Over time, this can progress to chronic kidney disease, CKD. 
An often overlooked side effect of long-term PPI use is low magnesium levels in the blood, or hypomagnesemia, which is linked to CKD. Hypomagnesemia can disrupt electrolyte balance and cause inflammation, triggering kidney disease. Low magnesium levels can also lead to other serious health problems, including muscle spasms, seizures, and irregular heartbeats. A 2019 cohort study published in the Journal of Pharmacotherapy investigated the effects of PPIs on kidney function. This study examined the relationship between PPI use and new cases of Aki and CKD in a large group of people. Among a cohort of 93,335 individuals, those taking PPIs had a 4.35 times higher risk of Aki compared to non-users. Similarly, PPI use was associated with a higher risk of CKD. In another group of 84,600 people, PPI users had a 1.2 times higher risk of developing CKD compared to those not taking PPIs. Given these findings, individuals taking PPIs should have regular checkupus to monitor their kidney function and magnesium levels. It is essential to be vigilant about the potential long-term risks associated with PPI use. 3. ACE Inhibitors Angiotensin Converting Enzyme ACE Inhibitors are prescription medications widely prescribed to lower blood pressure and manage conditions affecting the heart, blood vessels, and kidneys. Common ACE inhibitors include lisinopril, zestrel, prinavil, ramipril, altus, enalapril, vasotec, and banazepril, lotensin. These drugs work by blocking an enzyme that produces angiotensin II a substance that narrows blood vessels and increases blood pressure. By inhibiting this enzyme, ACE inhibitors help relax blood vessels, thereby lowering blood pressure and reducing stress on the heart. Benefits and mechanism ACE inhibitors also improve blood flow to the kidneys, which can protect these vital organs over the long term. This enhanced blood flow reduces the kidneys' workload particularly beneficial for patients with chronic kidney conditions. Additionally, ACE inhibitors can reduce the presence of protein in the urine, a common issue in chronic kidney disease, CKD, making them a common recommendation for people with kidney disease. Potential risks, despite their protective benefits, ACE inhibitors are not without risks. Combining them with NSAIDs and diuretics can increase the risk of acute kidney injury. Aki. Insufficient hydration while taking ACE inhibitors also raises the risk of Aki. If you are concerned about your risk, it's best to discuss ways to mitigate it with your doctor. Some patients worry that ACE inhibitors might decrease their estimated glomerular filtration rate, EGFR, a measure of kidney function. While ACE inhibitors can cause a slight decline in EGFR, this doesn't necessarily indicate kidney trouble. The reduction in EGFA occurs because ACE inhibitors relieve pressure on the kidneys, allowing the small filters called glomeruli to relax. However, in some cases, the EGFA may drop too much, particularly in patients with heart failure, CKD, or bilateral renal artery stenosis, blockage in both renal arteries. If this happens, your doctor may adjust your dosage or temporarily stop the medication to identify the cause. Rare but serious risks in rare cases, especially in patients with heart failure or severe dehydration, ACE inhibitors can cause acute renal failure. However, most patients recover without lasting kidney damage once the medication is stopped, even if dialysis was required temporarily. Guidelines for safe use patients with heart failure, diabetes, or CKD often benefit from ACE inhibitors due to their ability to ease kidney strain and provide long-term protection. However, it is crucial to carefully adjust dosages and regularly monitor kidney function to ensure safety and efficacy. 2. Antiviral drugs. Most viral infections resolve on their own without the need for antiviral drugs. However, 
Doctors prescribe antiviral medications for serious or persistent infections such as COVID-19, Ebola, influenza, genital herpes, hepatitis B and C, and HIV. These medications can help clear infections like the flu and combat other viruses in the body. For the flu, two common antiviral drugs are oseltamivir, Tamiflu, and Zanamivir, Relenza. In contrast, for chronic infections like HIV, hepatitis, and herpes, antivirals can't cure them completely but can ease symptoms and reduce severity. Benefits and risks antiviral drugs offer many benefits in treating viral infections, yet their potential to harm the kidneys cannot be overlooked. This risk arises from either direct toxicity or crystal buildup that can cause kidney stones, presenting a serious concern. Careful management and customized treatments are necessary, especially for people with pre-existing kidney problems. For instance, remdesivir, used for emergency cases of COVID-19, contains a substance called SBCD, which is primarily excreted by the kidneys. In individuals with kidney issues, SBCD might accumulate and cause kidney toxicity. Some clinical trials have inconsistently reported decreased kidney function with remdesivir. Data from global databases have shown a significant increase in cases of acute kidney failure associated with remdesivir compared to other COVID-19 drugs. However, large-scale clinical data confirming whether remdesivir is safe or harmful for people with kidney issues is still lacking, necessitating further studies. Antiviral-induced kidney injury Other antiviral drugs often lead to drug-induced acute kidney injury. Some antivirals, such as cidofavir, adefavir, foscarnet, acyclovir, interferon, and tenofovir, can directly cause cell death in kidney tubules by reducing blood flow or increasing toxin levels, resulting in a condition known as acute tubular necrosis. Additionally, the antiviral drug adizanivir can cause inflammation in the interstitial tissue of the kidneys, impairing kidney function. Drugs like acyclovir, indinavir, and foscarnet can cause crystal buildup in the kidneys, blocking the kidney tubules. Conversely, some antiviral drugs like tenofovir and foscarnet can help manage kidney damage, but also pose a notable risk of kidney failure. Therefore, taking these drugs under close medical supervision is crucial to safeguard kidney health. Guidelines for safe use to safely use antiviral drugs. It is essential never to skip doses or take them inconsistently. This practice can lead to virus adaptation making the antiviral less effective, a phenomenon known as antiviral resistance. Moreover, antiviral drugs are only available with a prescription, so it is important not to purchase them online or from unofficial sources. 1. Lithium Lithium is a prescription medication primarily used for mood stabilization and treating certain mental illnesses, such as mania and bipolar disorder. Mania is characterized by feelings of high excitement, overactivity, or distraction, while bipolar disorder involves mood swings between extreme highs, mania, and lows, depression. Common brand names of lithium include Priadol, Camglet, Liskanum, and Lee Liquid. For over 60 years, lithium has significantly improved the lives of many individuals suffering from bipolar disorder. However, its impact on kidney health cannot be ignored. Kidney risks and lithium use, long-term use of lithium can lead to serious kidney issues, including both acute and chronic kidney disease, as well as kidney cysts. Initially, kidney damage from lithium might be reversible, but it could become permanent over time. A major concern with lithium use is a type of diabetes linked to kidney damage called nephrogenic diabetes insipidus. This condition is different from typical diabetes caused by high blood sugar. In nephrogenic diabetes insipidus, the kidneys can't respond properly to a hormone called antidiuretic hormone, ADH, 
which controls fluid balance. This results in excessive thirst and frequent urination. In rare cases, long-term lithium use can even lead to end-stage renal disease, ESSERD. Symptoms of kidney trouble from lithium include excessive urine output, frequent nighttime urination, excessive thirst, and signs of dehydration, such as low blood pressure and a rapid heartbeat. In severe cases, it can cause changes in mental status. Other health impacts of lithium lithium can also cause the kidneys to excrete too much sodium, a condition known as hyponatremia. Sudden hyponatremia, where sodium levels drop quickly within less than 48 hours, can cause serious problems if not treated, including life-threatening muscle breakdown, rhabdomyolysis, severe confusion, seizures, coma, and even death. Therefore, patients should maintain a regular diet with adequate salt and fluids while taking lithium. It's crucial to determine a suitable dosage of lithium and get yearly blood tests to check creatinine levels. Seek medical help if anything seems amiss. Precautions and monitoring lithium can cause harm in multiple ways, not just by damaging the kidneys. Before starting lithium, inform your doctor if you have any kidney, heart, thyroid, or breathing problems, Addison's disease, or Brugada syndrome. If you suspect that your medication is affecting your kidney health, it's important to seek medical advice immediately. Symptoms of kidney failure might not be apparent initially, but as the condition worsens, signs such as decreased urine output, swelling in the legs, shortness of breath, and severe fatigue become more evident. If untreated, the consequences can be life-threatening. Monitoring and preventive measures if you are taking lithium or any other medications discussed in this video, regularly check your kidney function using tests that include blood creatinine levels, glomerular filtration rate, GFR, and urine tests for protein. Proper hydration helps your kidneys clear sodium, urea, and toxins from the body, which can mitigate the impact of nephrotoxic drugs. Be aware of potential interactions between your prescriptions that could impact your kidney health. Share all your current medications with any healthcare provider who prescribes a new drug. Antibiotics, NSAIDs, diuretics, proton pump inhibitors, ACE inhibitors, antiviral drugs, and lithium all have the potential to impair kidney function through mechanisms ranging from direct toxicity to effects on renal blood flow and electrolyte imbalances. For those with kidney disease, it is crucial to avoid or carefully manage the use of these medications. Patients should work closely with healthcare providers to select treatments that minimize risk to the kidneys, adjust dosages as necessary, and monitor kidney function regularly. Stay informed and proactive about your kidney health. Subscribe to our channel, hit the bell icon, and turn on all notifications to never miss a life-saving video. If you enjoyed this video, check out the one on the screen where we discuss the worst 18 habits that may harm your kidneys and tips to avoid them.